Hey, welcome back. There's a lot you can learn about people from their education and, more importantly, from their educators. In fact, in 2017, when former President Trump nominated Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, we interviewed several of his former students here on Fox 5 to get insight on how he impacted their lives. And now with a former teacher on the Democratic ticket tonight, we're welcoming, welcoming in two of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz's former students from Mankato, Minnesota. Please welcome Andrea Johnson, Jenny Diaz. They're both up late with me tonight here on the Final Five. By the way, the first thing I noticed when I walked over were the shirts, which are just Mr. <laughs> was my teacher. Uh, was I say we understand the assignments? Mm -hmm. Love that. Right. Uh, welcome in tonight. Good to see you both. Thank you. Thanks. I, I want to start with you, uh, Andrea. Um, you, uh, Tim Walls. The moment that you heard that he was going to be the vice presidential nominee, what went through your mind? I mean, my mind was just blown. I never thought that Mr. Walls would be a politician, but once he started running for Congress and then governor, I thought, you know what? He's going to be good at this because of the way we really saw him bring students together in the classroom. He really connected with us, whether we were a football player or a theater nerd like I was, <laughs> a straight-A student or struggling academically. He really showed me what inclusive teaching looks like, and that's what we need amongst our politicians, and, and he is that. And he can really kind of cut through a lot of the political baggage mm -hmm. that comes with issues and just know what we all really care about, like childcare and, and um, access to health care. So he's, it made a lot of sense, but it was also a big surprise. Uh, Jenny, she mentioned the fact, the fact that, uh, you know, never really thought of him as a politician, but he got into it. But social studies teachers, I think I know from my, my experience, they're the ones who really, really walk the walk and talk the talk. Yeah, absolutely. And so I do remember, of course, so part of his classroom is to be aware of current events. So it was always, you know, make sure you're reading the news, make sure you're getting information, make sure you're talking about what's going on because you live in this world. So he absolutely had that perspective. Um, and I know one of the things that was really cool in his classroom, he never, you know, really talked about politics aside from like know what's going on mm -hmm. and be aware. Um, but one of the things he had in his classroom, the bumper sticker of every single candidate that was on the ballot in our district. and. You know, it was just there as a kind of nod to just be aware of who your candidates are. It's on you to figure out what they believe in and what you believe in. So I, I just thought that was cool. I think one of the stories uh, we've we've heard a lot. I, I kind of. Uh, I had to smile when I would hear him referred to as Coach Walls uh, on the campaign trail, just because obviously that was a job mm -hmm. that he had long, long ago. Uh, but when you look at the fact he was a football coach, he was also an advisor to the LGBTQ student club. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think uh, clearly that that's an interesting dichotomy when you look at a teacher, somebody like him. He doesn't look like the guy that would fill both of those roles. Yeah, I mean, that's what makes him such a pow powerful leader now. And, and even then, he was a strong leader in our school. Everybody knew Mr. Walls. He was involved in everything from building the prom set to the theater sets, the GSA, to the football coach, the track coach. And he really connected with us and affirmed our identities. And that is incredibly powerful. And I think so powerful now when we're seeing a lot of extremists try to exclude and erase certain students from classrooms. Mr. Walls did the exact opposite. He really saw each of us and brought us all in. And that was so important um, to, to have that in the school and so important for our country now. I know uh, after I graduated from high school, every now and then I would, I would get back there or I would see some of the teachers. And we are in a society now where it's much easier to stay connected. When's the last time that you, you saw or talked to Mr. Walls? Oh, I have not seen him since graduation. <laughs> Really? Day. Yeah. I moved out of Mankato as soon as I could, <laughs> but um, I had to get away from those winters. But um, <laughs> what I think was so great is that, like, he's the sort of person who remembers his students. He has that uncanny ability, like, even the kids who weren't in his class, he knew their names, he knew their siblings, what they were into. And again, like, even if he wasn't our actual teacher, those kids in the hallway, he knew everyone. And, I, you know, I think that was reflected, in, you know, in the community as well. So... I think one of the things in education today, there's a lot said about character education and, and, and the content of people's character and what they stand for and what they represent. And, and obviously in politics, it is it can be a very messy game sometimes, and people have seized upon things that Governor, the, I said, Governor Walls, Mr. Walls, whatever we want to call him here, in this context that he said uh, that came out in the debate, uh, you know, what, what something that happened, uh, whether he went to Tiananmen Square or not. Uh, but he owned up to that. And, and I'm curious in terms of character, what, what do we learn from him? What have you learned from him now that he out of the classroom, now on the, uh, the campaign trail as a politician? 
I mean, I've only ever known him as a man of honesty and integrity. And, you know, like I said, I didn't think he was going to be a politician. He was everywhere supporting everybody, but there was no ego in it. It wasn't about him. It was about supporting his school and his community. And I think that's such a strong contrast to, to Don Donald Trump, who's a pathological liar um, and who is really trying to divide us and, and still fear in us. Mr. Walls is, is the exact opposite of that, really trying to bring us all together and really, again, kind of put the politics aside and say, what is it that we all really care about? We want to respect our neighbors. We want to take care of our families and make sure our families can make their own decisions. And I mean, I'm going through fertility treatment right now, and this has been so meaningful to me to hear my teacher, Mr. Walls, and Mrs. Walls share their personal story of going through fertility treatment. It's meant the world to me to have him normalize this and normalize it as a struggle for men as well. And I just think that's so powerful that he is showing up in that way and sharing that story. And he also shouldn't be forced to share that really private health care decision in such a public way to protect our basic health care rights. They should just be our basic health care rights. But he sees through all of that and, and is really here to, he has our backs. And, and I want to wrap things up, Jenny, as we talk about uh, just in terms of what we learn from our teachers growing up and what we pick up from them. I grew up in a town where, uh, you know, I knew a lot of my teachers outside of the classroom as well uh, over time. But, but what's, is there, is there one thing that you think that you've taken away from having Tim Walls as your teacher that, that has stuck with you now and will, regardless of what happens on November 5th for the rest of your life? Sure, absolutely. Like just that he is such a decent, hardworking, strong leader, cares so much about people. And so... When I think about what I learned from him, it's to, you know, be honest, be kind, treat people with respect. We all belong. We all deserve to be here. And when we work together, things are actually better. So we saw it in the classroom when we would cooperate and collaborate. And so that's what I take with me every day in public service as a librarian. <laughs> Kindness and helpfulness, helping your neighbor, that's exactly who he is and and what I do now and I think the most important thing to just uh, just say to our audience too is like I, I think it's important we're, even if we're just talking about a teacher that, that has had that impact you take the politics out of it I think we all can think of teachers in our lives that, that have made some sort of impact they just don't all run for vice president uh, yeah. Jenny great to meet you thanks thank for coming in tonight so Andrew yeah. great meeting you tonight thank, thank you, you so for much. coming and we appreciate it great. thank awesome. you and the final five is back after this